Oh. My. God. I'm literally speechless right now. I cannot get over what I just watched. Um, this is my recap for the interview for new episode of Glee, season four, episode eighteen, Shooting Star. Um, I'm, I'm literally speechless right now. This episode was just so amazing, and everyone was really, really good in it, and I just really, really loved it. <clears throat> and I mean, I just have to, you have to in this episode. I have to give this episode definitely applause. It was just amazing and definitely, definitely Glee's most powerful episode yet. Some people have said On My Way was a little bit more powerful. I felt like this episode was just as powerful, if not more, because On My Way you can sort of relate to, but this episode anybody could relate to. I mean, not everyone's just going to go around... Um, you know, committing suicide all the time. I'm sure people have done it. But I think you can, this episode you can relate to a lot more. And I just really, really loved it. So, before the episode started, disclaimer. This episode of Glee contains school violence. Your discretion is advised. I knew it was going to get real. And I knew big stuff was going to happen. Now, some people have debated over some things about this episode. Like, some people have said there should have been someone who got killed off. I'm going to talk about that. But, um, let's just start with the beginning of the episode, which wasn't as good as the rest of the episode. Um, this was just kind of silly. Brittany thinks an asteroid is going to hit the Earth, and, um, everyone basically, um, starts to believe her, and Will gives them the assignment of last chance performances. You know, like, what would they do if they're going to die the next day? You know, that's what he decides to do. And Brittany decides that the only person she wants to spend, you know, she wants to be with is her cat. I thought this would be a little bit more emotional than it was. They could have done something here emotional, but they didn't. Sam supports her for this, and I don't think he should have. I think what should have happened was we should have had a very intense scene, same scene in Brittany's bedroom, but Sam saying, you know, why do you love this cat so much? What's the big deal? It's just a cat. And then Brittany says something like, it's more than a cat to me. And then Sam basically says, okay, well, if you want to date your cat too much, why don't you date your cat and have them break up? And it would just be so intense. I feel like everything should have been so intense before um, the gunshot went off. Because I still, because it would have been like, they would be so sorry they said that to each other. And I think it would have been a lot more powerful. But I did think they did a good job with this scene. They still did do a good job with this scene. I thought it was still a really a good scene. It was just a little silly the way they did it. And that basically is resolved like a few minutes after the episode. And yeah, that's basically what happened there. So then also, I just want to get everything else out of the way before we get to the um, big stuff. And by the way, while they were doing this, Brittany and Sam end up singing more than words to the cat to Lord Covington. And what did I think of this performance? I thought it was really good, but it could have been done differently. I didn't like this very much. I thought it was stupid that you're singing to a cat. I mean, they could have done this a lot more emotional, and it wasn't as emotional. It could have been done in a different episode, and I just thought that aspect of the episode was just really, really stupid and silly. And I think they just did so they could get the comedy out of the way, but that was stupid. So, now let's get to what started off as the main plot in the episode, Ryder and Katie. Ryder basically um, really wants to meet Katie. He tells Jake all about her, and he thinks he sees Katie, and he sees Katie, and he goes into the choir room with her, and he starts singing her this song, which I love this song, personally. I loved this song. I thought it was really great. It's my second favorite song from the episode. There's only three, but I still really love this song. And once they start doing the two songs in a row, I'm like, oh, oh boy, something's about to go down. Um, 
shit's about to hit the fan, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna be a really intense episode, and, you know, I think that was even more intense with Ryder, he basically finds out it's not Katie, her name is Marissa, and she finds out that someone catfished him and pretended to be her, basically, and used the name Katie. So, Ryder starts accusing everybody left and right. He starts accusing Marley and he accuses Jake. He just doesn't know what to do. I really thought Ryder was going to snap and be the shooter. And I didn't think it was going to end up being who it was, but I'm going to get to that. Um, I just thought that was really, really powerful scene with him. And I just thought that was really, really amazing. And then the only other thing I want to talk about is Coach Beast and Will. I actually like the storyline. I thought it was cute. I mean, I totally thought this could happen. I mean, the only person that's been there for Coach Beast is Will. He's always stood by her since day one. And so why wouldn't she have feelings for him? Why wouldn't she? And I mean, they were giving out confessions, so why wouldn't she have feelings for him? I thought it was cute. And then, once we find out the asteroid isn't going to hit the Earth, we go to a commercial break. And before that, um... Brittany and Becky have a conversation, basically. Becky is very scared about graduating. She is afraid that when she goes out into the big world, people will not accept her for her Down syndrome. And she tells Brittany, we're not going to graduate. And Brittany says she really wants to graduate. She wants to get out into the big world. She has plans. And I thought both Lauren Potter's and Heather Morris's acting in this were amazing. It was just a really great scene. Brittany was shown really intelligent like she was in season two. See, that's the Brittany I want. I don't want this stupid Brittany. She's really annoying. I like this Brittany, the, the, the soft side of Brittany. The, see, the Brittany that cares about people. This is the Brittany that we all want, and this is the Brittany that we got in this episode. I thought that was amazing, honestly. Um, and so that scene was absolutely amazing. So that comes on then after the commercials, what do we hear? Gunshots. It might not have been that many times, there's only two, but yeah, we hear gunshots, and as soon as the gunshots come, uh, the episode just takes, where, where is my buttons? I need my buttons here. The episode just gets very dramatic. Yeah, definitely very dramatic, and the episode, there wasn't even, the background music was so intense in this episode, I love the background music too, it wasn't their normal music, it was like intense music, and I felt like I was watching a horror movie at some points here, like a found footage horror movie, and I'll get to that, but I thought there were some amazing performances here, and people start confessing things left and right, um, Kitty, I thought, was the first thing I want to talk about. She basically ends up telling Marley the whole Grease thing, and I was so glad she did. And I just gotta say, Kitty in this episode was amazing, and I love that she did that. I just think that it's that was amazing right there. I think, you know, what Kitty said to her was amazing, and... Marley calls up her mother. She's not answering because Marley's mother is just so terrified. She doesn't know what could have happened to her daughter. And Kitty basically tells Marley, nothing bad's going to happen to your mother. Um, people really like her. And I really love this side of Kitty. I told you guys, when Becca Tobin is giving good material, she can really act. And she really hit the nail on the head in this episode. She was amazing, I think. And definitely... After this episode, she should definitely get um, a nomination for Best Supporting Actress. She was, she's just that good, and she's really great. I really hope they continue to give her good material, not stupid stuff like her just insulting people. Um, I thought that's real. this is really what they should keep giving her. Because she can work really, really good with this kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, next thing I want to talk about is um, Sam. Sam doesn't know what happened to Brittany. He's so scared of what happened to her. Was she, you know, but it turns out she's on the toilet crying. And, um, you know, that's what you do in a real Code C drill. If this is what happens, and Glee was completely realistic with this, 
even having a boy in there, if you are not in a classroom, you run to the nearest bathroom and you stand on the toilet. Don't don't worry if it's a girl's room or a boy's room or whatever. Get to the nearest bathroom. Get to the nearest room and stay there. That's what you have to do. And I was so glad that we addressed that. And I just have to say that that definitely was awesome. And that whole scene was completely silent. Heather Morris didn't say one word in that scene. She just stood on that toilet crying emotionally. And I just thought that scene was also amazing. I thought she did such a great job there. And I really, really think Heather Morris should get a nomination for Best Supporting Actress as well. She was just so good in that scene. Her emotion was raw. You felt for her. It was amazing. And then Blaine doesn't know where Tina went. And we see Tina was late to Glee rehearsal. And she's standing there saying, please let me in, please let me in, please let me in. She can't get anywhere. And, you know, we hear her rattling at the door, and it was probably her. And, um, see how all that happened. And then the last thing that happens is Ryder ends up calling, um, whoever Katie is, and we hear a phone ring. Do I have a phone ring on here? I need a phone ring. Uh, I have police siren, but that's not gonna work. You know what? Why don't I just play my phone ring? Yeah, I do have a phone ring. Where's my settings? I'm sorry, guys. I need these sounds. I think they're cool. Uh, yeah, so they hear a phone ring. But, um, it's, and it's somebody's, it's in somebody's backpack. They don't know whose it is, and it keeps ringing. And, of course, they need to be quiet. But... It just keeps ringing, and I thought that scene was also amazing, and also, I, I just thought that whole scene right there with that phone ringing was amazing. That was also awesome, because, I mean, that one little sound, it's amazing how one little sound can put you in, a, in so much danger in a situation like that. One little sound. There was a scene when... Will told everybody, text everybody, call everybody, you know, and, you know, simple noise, this noise went off, simple vibration, that was the noise we heard, a simple vibration, and Will shush somebody, and I thought that was amazing too, how that all worked out, I just thought everything there was amazing, and Blake Jenner should also be getting Best Supporting Actor, I think he's the best of the newbies. But we really saw that all of them are really talented. I mean, Marley, Jake, Ryder, um, Kitty, and Unique all were amazing this episode. After this all happens, Artie starts taking out his camera. And this is when it felt like a found footage movie to me. And he starts going to each one and they all say their goodbyes. And um, they were all so emotional. And we saw some of them. But we didn't see all of them. We do see them eventually. But then the, we hear um, the SWAT team say it's all clear and everybody is okay. And that was just amazing when we find out everybody was okay. Now, some people said that they felt somebody, you know, this is just their opinion. I may not necessarily agree with this. I'll get to this. But... Some people said that there should have been a, someone should have gotten, somebody should have gotten shot. Um, and they said somebody should have gotten shot. And to, in my personal opinion, yes, I do feel like it would have been a little bit more effective if somebody got shot. But the whole thing would be then, they'd have to show blood and everything, and Glee is not a show that shows blood. It is very, even though this was a very raw, intense episode, I don't think it would have been the right place to do that, because how would they, why would they shoot somebody in the choir room? Why would they do that? It'd be stupid. I do think there was one thing they could have done, which I'll get to. So, they get the all clear, and everything's okay, and then we go back into the regular plots. So, first we see Tina being so upset, and actually, so next day, everyone's getting metal detector tricks and everything, and, um, 
basically, um, Will, Coach Beast, and Sue are all there talking, and Will basically tells um, Sue that whoever does this, the kid's going to get expelled, and Sue basically says, oh, no kid's going to get expelled because it was my gun. And I thought that was just, wow, that was definitely a wow there, and I thought that was amazing, definitely. And, um, here's the thing I also, um, thought was amazing. There was Jane Lynch. I thought she was absolutely incredible in that scene. We then see Sue go into the principal's office, go into Principal Fagan's office, and she basically ends up telling him the truth, and he basically says there's nothing he can do about it. And you know there's something more to this, but they're not going to tell us because you know there's something more to this. And really, some people probably saw it coming, but I will get to it. So then we see um, uh, Tina and Blaine. Basically, Tina is so upset. She was so worried about what could happen. But I loved this scene so much. It was one of my favorite scenes in the episode because it went from they went Tina went from crying to laughing in just a matter of seconds. Because um, she said something and Blaine was laughing and everything was okay and she just felt so happy and she said oh, everyone in there was her family and she said she was so upset because she didn't want to be a little snarky comment about her not getting a solo and I thought that was really funny right there what she said. I thought that was definitely really, really good what she said and I enjoyed that for the most part. Um, definitely, I thought. I thought Jenna Uskowitz was also amazing and she... Really, she needs to. I've been loving what they're doing with Tina's character this season, and that really was amazing, I think. And the last thing that happens is we see Sam and Brittany, and that was the cutest scene. But again, I felt like it could have been a nice scene if they had had a fight, and then Sam basically says, I'm so sorry, I said all that stuff, I'd never meant it. And then he could have given her the cat. I felt like it could have been a little bit more. Cute, but it was still a cute scene. I enjoyed it. I think they're cute together. You know, it was a it was a nice scene. It was definitely a aw moment. It was cute. So yeah. So then we come back from commercials, and then we see that. Um, and the reason I'm bringing this episode down is because there wasn't just the plots were all split up basically. So you don't even we don't even know what um you know the plots are just split up basically. It wasn't. It was just a a whole bunch of stuff that happened, eventful stuff. Um, so after that, we come back from commercials, and then we see Sue, and she is about to leave uh, McKinley, and Will asks if there's anything he can do. And while this is happening, we then see that Becky is talking to Sue, and Becky is the shooter. <laughs> That was amazing, honestly. Um, Sue basically tells Becky to give her the gun, and I love the way Sue did it. She she was so protective of her. She was very much being a parent to her, and she basically said that she'll always be a part, and she basically said, um, sweetheart, I've told you before, you'll always be a part of this school. And um, Becky basically says she wanted to be ready to protect yourself, and Sue says, oh, I know, sweetheart, and she was just very, very much tender love and care. She did exactly the right way, and I love that she did that way. It wasn't just, get the, get the, gut, get the hell out of my office. It was one of those things where Sue says that all the time. I thought it was very dramatic and amazing. I felt like in this instance, Becky, probably, they should have had something with Becky shooting herself. I think that would have been a little bit more intense but because of it being Becky they probably didn't want to do that because they felt like it would be really stupid to kill. I think they shouldn't have killed her off but she should have shot herself because the gun was at her fingers so what did she shoot herself in the fingers did anything happen and I think the bullet might have missed her but I still feel like she, she should have been the one to get hurt um, because it would have been a lot more effective so Sue doesn't tell anybody and she has this secret to keep now I think that is just amazing right there. That is amazing writing. 
definitely. So, the episode basically ends with um, Ryder waiting for Katie. She never shows up, and he gets very upset, but in the end, he ends up going to the Glee meeting, and they end up singing... Oh my gosh. They end up singing my favorite song from the episode... I'm like, okay, this is needed. Now I know why it was needed. It was completely needed. It was completely there for the story. And especially the ending scene. It just gets to you. Hey, what you, need to say. Hey, what you just the entire ending sequence got to you. They did the entire song. And it's just amazing. And that's basically how it ended. So I gotta say, this episode is just so amazing. I can't get over how good it is. That scene, when they were in the dark classroom, gave me goosebumps. That was for like a good 15, 20 minutes. And they never went to commercial break. And I, that was amazing. It was like you were in the room with them. And they kept going back and forth between what people who were not in the room were doing and then people in the room. I thought that was really cool how they did that. And the one thing that this episode did was it made me remind myself how much I love Glee. And I've never felt so... You know, the last episode that made me feel so happy about Glee is probably, um, I do, I really, really loved that episode, but I think the last one that really made me so happy about Glee and really made me feel great about Glee was probably, uh, Swan Song. That was the last episode of Glee that made me feel like I love Glee, and there's so much going on now that it's so amazing. I feel like now they're making it so a lot, you know, it's getting a lot more interesting. And it, it really shows that they have really good actors and actresses. And it didn't even go to New York. And I still loved it. My favorite episode of the season, definitely. So let me know what you guys thought of the episode. I also love this whole thing with Katie. Who do you think Katie is? And what did you think of the whole gun storyline? And by the way, Sue is not gone because... In episode 20, she is going to sing Little Girls from Annie. It has been confirmed that she is going to sing that. It is on Glee Wiki, so if you guys don't believe me, go on to Glee Wiki. It's there. But that's it for my review of season 4, episode 18 of Glee. And I still can't get over how good the episode was. And um, hope you guys enjoyed my review, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!